Apocalypse. Apocalypse! Hear ye, hear ye, the world will end in 2020... Uh, 20 seconds. What are you going to do? Hide inside of a bunker? Lock all of your windows? Rob the nearest Lego store? Uh, I didn't manage to get any of the good ones, but I got a Mega Blocks. We, we can build it inside of your bunker. Oh, oh, oh. No! Apocalypses are bad. Let's start off by talking about a classic. Zombies. Surprisingly, a zombie apocalypse has a real possibility of happening. Let me elaborate. Cordyceps are a type of fungus. Cheeto. More specifically, we are talking about Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, colloquially called the zombie ant fungus. Yeah. Basically, what happens is, spores land on the exoskeleton of an ant. The spore then germinates and penetrates the ant's body. Once inside the ant's body, the fungus starts growing and spreading, consuming the ant's soft tissue while avoiding vital organs to keep the host alive for as long as possible. As the fungus grows, it begins to manipulate the ant's behaviour. The ant's nervous system is hijacked by the fungus, causing it to exhibit abnormal behaviours. The infected ant is compelled to leave its colony and climb vegetation typically ascending to a specific height and location that is optimal for the fungus to reproduce. Once at the predetermined location, the ant clamps its mandibles onto a leaf or stem and dies. The fungus continues to grow and eventually erupts from the ant's body, releasing spores to the surrounding environment. That's pretty cool, Teeth, but that'll never happen to us. We're humans, and they're bugs. I wouldn't be so sure. Although it's a big leap to go from insects to humans, after all, fungi likes to grow at specific temperatures, other species of fungi have done similar leaps before, like Sporothrix, found in Brazil, primarily infects plants, however recently it has made the jump to infecting cats. Infected. Pretty bad stuff, right? Still not as bad as the apocalypse, of not joining my Discord! There's lots of things to do, like talking to my girlfriend, posting memes in the wrong channels, and meeting quirky characters such as Fabia, my literal only Patreon subscriber. Huh? Did someone say Patreon? Yeah, I have a Patreon now. If you join my Patreon, you'll get benefits such as credits at the end of my videos, videos like these a week early, and my undying appreciation for you. I'm currently not getting paid by YouTube for making these videos, so your support is greatly appreciated. Also, I told Fabio that if he joined the Patreon, I would dedicate one minute to just telling everyone how cool he is. He in fact did join, and I am a man of my word, so stick around until the end of the video. Anyways, that's enough from me, let's get back to your regularly scheduled programming. The end is... Still not here yet, so let me enlighten you of what will happen when Judgment Day arrives. Supposedly, without warning, Jesus returns to gather his followers. This is often described as happening in the twinkling of an eye, with believers instantly transformed and caught up to meet Jesus in the air. Those who have died as believers are resurrected and join living believers in meeting Jesus. The sigma. They are saved from the tribulations and judgments that accompany the end times, including the Great Tribulation. Believers are reunited with Jesus Christ for eternity, enjoying fellowship with him in heaven. Wow, that sounds bloody brilliant, doesn't it? Oh wait, I, I don't believe in Jesus. So what will happen to me on Judgment Day? In it, non-believers may face the possibility of eternal separation from God and punishment in the afterlife. Yourself. Okay, so like, not much then. Uh, well, you will also have to stay on Earth with the Antichrist. Okay, so what's he like? 
He's the opposite of Jesus. So you're telling me the Antichrist can uh, swim on land? I don't really know. There's like a billion different interpretations of the rapture, and I'm not going to get into all of them. But here's a few. Some say that a horn will be sounded at the start of the rapture. Some also say that some funky skeletons on horses will just start flying around. So honestly, just expect the unexpected on that day. And now for the minute dedicated to my first Patreon subscriber, Fabia. The time starts now. Let me tell you a few things about Fabia. He was, in fact, the first dog to land on the moon. He also invented the, the spinny hat thingy. Did I forget to mention that he was the best man at my future wedding? Or so he tells me. Fabia rescued me from the beaches of Normandy. We made sandcastles. It was a really fun day out. This mad son of a bitch rode his bicycle to give his grandma flowers on her birthday. This one's true. <laughs> he got the Nobel Peace Prize. Again. Is there anything this dog can't do? I I've run out of things to say, so I'm just going to be making them up on the fly. He, he cured cancer. Cancer's gone, everyone. He also cured AIDS. By sticking leeches somewhere. Uh, he also invented time. 